reason that I brought this video because the Lord spoke to me like on this weekend he spoke to me like right before the new year we were like we were praying and and, and we had we, we we went away and and we every morning we had time of prayer and you know I normally do that anyway but we got together as a group and and towards the end of the year God spoke to me like 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 he didn't really spoke to me he kind of like shook me up and I was telling you guys I was telling you guys about it but Omar and Sylvia and Jean they, they don't know about what happened so that's why I said well I'm gonna bring it to the church so that day you know because you know I was even we went to Giselle's house and you know we did you know we did some exchanging of gifts and this and that I had a conviction you know what I mean because God already had talked to us the year before about Christmas and everything that has to do with Christmas and how it came from a pagan holiday and all this. And it, we kind of like got sucked into it again. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was like God was, you know, shaking me. And we watched a video earlier. And the video is called, um, if somebody else is going to be watching, it's called Truth from Truth or Tradition, right? Truth or Tradition, that's what it's called. And, and the whole point of the video is that throughout this whole video that, because that in the morning I woke up like very uncomfortable and then I'm like, and I told the Lord, Lord, you know, what's the problem? And God, I opened my internet and God took me right to this video. So I watched the video in the morning while the girls were sleeping or whatever. And then when I got up, I told him, look, you know, I feel terrible. God spoke to me and he told me, look, you went back to your ways. You jumped right back to the old ways of thinking, the old ways of doing stuff. You know, you even, you know, doing stuff that I told you not to do from before. And little by little, you have fallen back into the old patterns of living. And that's not the way that I want you to live. You know, the thing is that we constantly keep falling back into our old ways of thinking. And then I said, well... You know, I'm gonna bring this on Friday. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this on Friday because there's a lot of, you know, God even told me when we're there, He told me, I want you to go to a church, the church that I had went to before a long time ago that I had went to Saint Augustine before I had went to that church is like a famous church. Yeah, blah, blah blah. I'm not gonna say the name of the church, but it was funny that God told me, look. Go see that church. And I told my wife and Stacy and, and, and Samantha, and they go, yeah, let's go to the church. And the funny thing about the whole church thing is that when we got to, when we're going to St. Augustine, everywhere there's there's like you gotta pay for parking. Thirty dollars parking, twenty dollars parking, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere you had to pay for parking. We get to the church and we park right in the front. There was a parking right there for us in the front of the church. <laughs> so it was like God was telling me, I want you to see some stuff. You know what I mean? I want you to see some stuff. You know, and through this video, you know, God showed me a lot of things that, that when we stepped into this church, like everything came to light. You understand what I'm saying? God, God wanted to speak to me throughout this whole situation. Um, and and we, I took some pictures. Samantha took some pictures. I don't know if Jean has the pictures. You got them? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put the pictures that I took that were in the church. We took these pictures in the church. They're coming up a bit very much. Yeah, hopefully they come out good there. And this was a Christian church? That okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Okay, this picture, if you look in the picture real good, what do you see in here? The dragon. That's the winged wing dragon. That's inside the church. You know what this this thing is? Go hit the next picture. No, no, go go back to another picture. There's a picture. Well, I'm gonna there, right there. This is where the holy water they get the holy water from. You, you, this is the where the holy water. Labor or something? Yeah, no, no, no. It's not labor. Know, it's, that, that's where they put the holy water. It's not labor. But what do you see there? Look. More serpents. The winged dragon. 
right inside the holy water, right in the thing that you, you like, you clean your water. I'm like, this is crazy. You know, how could this be inside the church? You know what I mean? How could, how could you have inside the church where you get the holy water, wing dragons and dragons on the on the thing? That doesn't even make any sense. So then we. We kept going, like, right when we got there, I was like, whoa, this is, like, crazy, you know. And after we had watched that video, Truth and Tradition, like, you know, God wanted to show me, or show us, because we all seen it, what was in the church. So I was like, I'm going to bring it here, because, you know, I'm, like, kind of, like, being ignorant about the whole situation, you know what I mean, about what God had called us and talked to us before. So he kind of, like, God was like, I'm going to go show you in life. Like live, you know what I mean? Because I like okay, I seen the video and I seen all the pictures in the video, but you know that's a video. You know he could have got the pictures from somewhere else, but it wasn't like that. God said, "I'm gonna show you for real, so you don't go back to the same thing that I told you from before." So then go to another picture. Look, look, look. This is a chair. Look, who's on the chair? Baby Tammuz. Look at it. it right, Gene? It's right there on the chair, right there next to the altar. That chair is right next to the altar. I hope you didn't sit there, did you? No, 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 look, they have a rope. They don't let nobody sit there. They don't let nobody sit there. <laughs> and it's like crazy. I'm like, you know, and I was looking at some pictures of, of Cupid, and Cupid is baby Tammuz. And, and if you look at, I looked it up, and Cupid is like drinking from the mother's, and that's the same thing that they show in the in, in the in the in the truth of tradition, the video that we watched. Well, Tammuz was a, was a hunter, that's why he has the bow. That's why Cupid has the bow. Exactly, but let, let's keep going. Let, 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 let's see another picture. Okay, this is the picture that I told you guys when we were watching the video. I said, stop and look at the the what was it, the, the Vatican, right? That there is a cross and a circle. Look at that on the Christmas tree. That Christmas tree is like snap right there in the middle of the, right next to the altar. Look, the altar is right there and the Christmas tree is right next to the altar. And look what's in uh, what, uh, the, what is it? Silver and gold. <laughs> that thing is full of silver and gold. Huh? What are you thinking? So let's go to uh, uh, how many? I only, uh, I only we have uh, twelve pictures. Okay, give, give me another picture. Look, look, look what's in the middle of the, the sun. The sun god in the middle of the thing right there. Go to another picture. Look, this was interesting to me because if you look at the heart, yeah, the heart that's on. It, if you look at the heart right there. Who's that there on top of the heart there? Baby Tammuz. <laughs> it's crazy. This is a picture that's inside the inside the church, and I'll be like thinking about like the devil was was God's worship leader, right? And what is Tammuz Tammuz or whatever doing right there on top of that harp? You know what I mean? Like really? Like why would you do something like well, whatever? What what we got more pictures? Oh look. This is the this is the architectural work of that church, and if we look at it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Mm -hmm. That's the art. That's the picture that they took. That's in the church of that church. Did it have a steeple? Bro, it did have a steeple. It had yeah. a steeple, but the Seven. the. Let me tell you, I didn't take that many pictures because there are so many obelis in that whole area. Like there is a whole mall that had like three of them. Bam, bam, bam. In, the, in like, I was like, I'm not even gonna take a picture. I think Samantha took pictures, right? Yeah. I didn't. I'm like, I'm not even. There's too much. There was too <laughs> much stuff. I was already like, whatever. So then they have a holy book, right? The holy book has. Number. No, no, it's Sunburst and who's who's in every little corner, look. Baby Tammuz. Everywhere. Everywhere throughout the thing. Everywhere. And this is like their holy book. This is under the chair. 
the, with the two arms, this character is under the chair. Osiris? I don't know who it is, but you know, that's, it, that's in a church. He looks on a the, lot like a Krampus. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a Krampus, right? Yeah. So there is a, there is a, there is a, in the, in the, in, there is a painting on the, I, I didn't give you that, that painting, but there is a painting on the, on the roof, and it had like the, what was it, Peter or something? It's it had, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh-huh, and one of them had the, the goat head. The goat, the goat head. Like, why are you going to put a goat head on, on Peter, you know what I mean? But, uh, so, then... Oh, so hold on a second. Now I'm going to tell you what happened. Because I'm looking at the other picture. There. <laughs> so then we go. Is, is there another picture instead of that one? Yeah, this this one. Go go hit that one. All right. These lights. These lights are like all over the church. If you look at the light, what's in the light right there? The serpent's crow, crojan. The serpent is right there. So, to make things interesting, <laughs> there's th this is a, like a famous church, so there's guides there that are like telling you, you know, the history. the history of the church. Over there they had Sunday school, over here was this, over there was that. So then we go up to the guides and, and the girls start talking to them and, you know, they start talking to them about stuff. So I go and I say, hey. How come there's dragons on here? <laughs> I knew that was good. I thought, why is there dragons there on the on the on the thing on the on your stuff there? He's like, well, 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 and then he he's like, yeah, because the old Gothic era has crept into the church, and he said something like that, yeah, right? What that guy said. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. And then he's like, and, and then there was a lady there, and she's like, but I guess the guy knew more than the lady. So the, the lady's like, I never knew there was dragons on the thing. <laughs> she, she was blinded. And let me tell you, I've been in that church before. I never seen all this stuff. I never even looked at all this stuff. I, I went in that church, I was like, oh, this church is beautiful. They have the windpipes. They have all kind of beautiful stuff. It's the church is awesome but what I didn't see that God the enemy has us blinded like we don't see stuff but once he opens our eyes we can't close our eyes again mm -hmm. because he he opened our eyes and God took us to this church so we could see the truth you understand what I'm saying and this guy was telling me this and that and I'm like and then he was talking you know, he was trying to bring history and whatever. And I told him, look, bro, how could darkness be in the light? How are you going to bring that stuff inside the church? Darkness and light cannot be together. You know what I mean? I said, Satan cannot cast out Satan. You know what I mean? That is, you cannot bring the, the, you cannot bring the devil into the church, basically. And, the, and, and the lady was like, oh, my God. You know, she was looking around and everything. I'm like, you know, you got dragons and demons and goblins all over this place. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the lady was like, hopefully she got a revelation and she got saved and she don't go back to the church. I, I'm i not saying anything. But then the guy says, oh, you should go look at the door that's over there on the east <laughs> side of the... Yeah. <laughs> so the door goes hit the door. <laughs> So the door is all full of all these little things are like evil demons and goblins on the door of the church. On the door of the church. So basically what I wanted to tell you guys today is that like, oh, there's one more. There's one more picture. Go, go hit that picture. I didn't even catch this one. Samantha's the one that caught this one. She's out. like, oh my God, because I don't know about this stuff because I've never seen none of this. This is, she go, Samantha said, oh my God, Pastor, look at, the, look at the symbol, look at the symbol, the symbol right there. You see the circle with the triangle? And I, I'm like, I don't, I don't know about that symbol, but Samantha knew about the symbol. That symbol is in Harry Potter. What is it? What is that symbol about? It's, it's just different items that he needed to collect to be like the ultimate immortal 
being. Like you can't be killed in the series if you have all three of those. If you have, if you have this this symbol, whatever. Well, yeah. I don't know if you got never seen Harry Potter, but the Freemasons, the Freemasons, they have they have that pyramid with the eye. Well, there you go. And that's and that's something that the author herself she looked into it, and she found out that she had that was something she felt she had subconsciously absorbed, and that was actually the inspiration from, from that she Freemason. found for that. There from you the go. Freemason symbol well, of the triangle. Dollar, yeah. 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 Well, and how how old is this church? A yeah, lot older than Harry that. Potter. A lot older than that. Guaranteed. That's the same church, right? It's yeah, St. Augustine, same bro. Yeah, yeah, but what, I know St. Augustine was like the first city. I, I mean, the first. Bro, that church, church is old, old bro. Uh, old. Be 18 something. Yeah, so and, 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 and look what's on the door of the, yeah. the gates of the church. Freemasons, yeah. Freemasons, free masons to, 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 you know, to this day are, are still, you know, all our presidents, all no, our I founding know. fathers were all uh -huh. in that secret order. So, um,. As I was, as I was, you know, I, I said, you know what, I, 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 I want to bring this to the church because even, you know, with little man, I was telling him about, you know, oh, you know, it's all right, you know, because he wanted to have a Christmas tree for his nephews and this and that, and I was like, this frustrated me, like, very, because I, I instead of telling him, no, because we don't believe in that, because, you know, we, we you know, God has shown us that that is not something that's godly. This is a pagan tradition that has come back from a long time ago. You understand what I'm saying? And so I kind of, I, I wanted little man to be here because I wanted him to see this, but I have no idea why he didn't come today. Maybe the enemy didn't want him to see. But when I see him again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that he knows. But my whole point is that, that, you know, throughout this whole thing that God was speaking to me, you know, He was He was telling me, you know, that we need we need to to forget about the old ways and we need to come into what God has for us. God has something new in this year and He wants to take out all the old. But we cannot go into next year, you know, and fall into the same trap of the enemy. You know, because in the end of the year. We fell into the same trap. We went and kind of like, we were like, no, we're not going to celebrate Christmas and this and that because it's a pagan holiday, but we did. You know what I mean? And it ain't going to happen again. And that's what the enemy wants. So I'm going to go and I'm going to give a couple of, uh, a couple of scriptures because I'm not going to. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians. So you got to pull out your Bibles. You don't got Bibles? You didn't bring a Bible? Second Corinthians what? Six. It's funny because this is in the book of Corinthians and from what that guy, Jim Staley, was saying, <laughs> the Church of Corinth way was, that's where there was all kind of messed up stuff going on. That's where all this paganism was from. So, we're going to see what Paul, Paul asked the Church of Corinth five questions, okay? In, the, in, this, in this set of scripture, Paul asked the Church of Corinth five questions. And I'm going to ask you the same five questions. Verse 1, or verse 14, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. How is it? 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 6, 14 through 18. Paul asked five questions to the church of Corinth. And it says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Like, that's the start right there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put the point. He kind of like, first of all, the first thing I want to tell you is do not be equally un, equally yoked with unbelievers. Basically, this is telling me I cannot be with, around people that don't believe. You know what I mean? People, a lot of people say, oh, no, because this is, you know, talking about marriage and this. And, yeah, you can put it in marriage. But I think it also talks about the way that we need to be. Because question number one says, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? 
That I'm asking you a question. No. Nothing. 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 Of course not. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Paul says, "For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What? Nothing. There's nothing. We cannot." Bring in a little bit of, of this into that, and it, you can't you can't do a little mix. No. You can't mix it anywhere. I, but I'm bringing you what the Bible says. You know, I'm not telling you what the video says. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 telling you what God wrote in His Word. We cannot lawlessness and righteousness. You cannot mix. They don't mix. It's like. It's like water and oil, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And then question number two, it says, and what communion has light with darkness? None. It's the same comparison. Same comparison, right? You can't, light and darkness can't be in the same place, right? So I tell that guy in the church, I'm like, how are you going to have darkness in a church that is supposed to be light? Right? That's what I told her. That's what I told her, right? Yes, sir. I know how are you gonna have that inside a church that is supposed to be light? How could you have darkness in light? What are you saying? Uh -oh. He was like, oh, 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 oh. He did ho, ho, ho. Yeah, he did ho, ho, ho. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's true. But how are you going to bring that into the church? Like, I'm like, oh, but that's come from the Celtic move. I'm like, but why are you going to bring the Celtic move in the church? Imagine the holy water. That's where they baptize the babies. And um, that, that bowl is where they, they baptize the baby. Because I know I've seen it, right? They put their head there and they, they right there in that bowl. In that bowl, it has two winged dragons and dragons around the... You know, like, really? I, am I going to put, I'm going to let somebody put my kid inside a dragon thing and put water on his head. Where nowhere in the Bible does it say that we have to baptize our babies. And we're baptizing them in the dragon. Like, really like saying, like, you, I'm going to baptize them with the devil. That is the same, that bowl is where they baptize. I know, I've seen my little nephew get baptized in that same bowl. In that same exact bowl. That's not the bowl in the front of the church. We've seen it. It wasn't in the front. That was by the altar. That's where they baptized the babies. You want to put the picture back? Look at that picture. Watch. Look at it. That's, it's a big old bowl. It's not a little bowl. That's a big bowl. That's the one that they baptized the babies. That's not, that wasn't in the front of the church where you go and you throw the holy water. No, no, that thing was right in front of the altar there. That's the one they baptized the baby. And from, from what I see, that those look like winged dragons. What? Yep. What do you think? Yep. Okay. Okay, question number three. What did it say, Gene? And what accord has Christ with Belial? What is it? Nothing. Zero. How could Christ be in the church and also the winged dragon in the church? How could it be? How could it be? How could we bring the enemy inside the church today and say it's fine and dandy? How can we celebrate something that God has already told us not to celebrate and keep saying, oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I've been doing this since I was a little kid. Let me tell you, I got sucked in this year. I got sucked in. I got sucked in. Because it's a tradition that I've been doing for many, many years. And it's like, man, I want to give my kids gifts. And you know what I mean? That's something that I got when I was a kid. I want to give too. I want to bless my kids, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. It's a hard thing to break. It's a hard thing to break, Omar. Because, you know, I have, I have yeah, kids. Man, you're like 40, 50, something. Well, 40, now. <laughs> 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 and then we're like, 
like 40 some years. I forgot, I wasn't, I'm not 18 anymore. 50, 50, Omar, don't, don't worry. No, 51. 51, there you go. 51, right? Yeah, at least I'm great, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not hard to stop. So, what's the next question? Somebody else read it. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? No, no. The, my next question yeah, is, or well, what part so has a believer Sorry. with a unbeliever? But that's okay. that, that's the next question. <laughs> Sorry, I got it. I went to a different translation. It's fine. No, no. But you just went a, a, a you went a verse ahead. It, it, my translation says the same thing that you read. Huh? You want to answer that question? I think with unbelievers and believers. You know, un unbelievers will put doubt in your head, and then they'll they'll take you back to where you know, take you back to where you where you, where, where you where you, you know where you came. From, you know, they go you know you, you know what I mean. That's what happens. It's like you don't want. It's not like you don't want to hang out with them, but you, you know. And I don't want to. You know, it's like I don't want to be. You know, I don't want to stop being your friend. But you know, it's like what it says. You can't be equal. You can't be equally yoked with them because what happens when you when you lay when you hang out with them? You when you lay with a dog with fleas, what are you gonna do? You gonna wake up? You gonna wake up with fleas? You know, and that's that's bottom line. That's a that's a good one. I like that one. I'm gonna put that one in my book. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. The next one, Samantha. <laughs> What agreement has the temple of God with idols? What? Nothing. We cannot, you know, we cannot put idols inside of our temple. And let me tell you, I don't want to tell you how many idols that, that temple had. They had mm -hmm. That thing was crazy. <laughs> okay, so then it says, for you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, right? So if we're the temple of the living God, none of this stuff should be part of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Like, everything that we've been talking about shouldn't be part of our lives. What does 1 Corinthians 6.19 says? So we have a better idea. Yeah, go ahead. 619? Yes. 619? 619. 1 Corinthians. Oh, 1 Corinthians. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. So it says, so if we look at the scripture and it's talking about fellowship, that we cannot have fellowship with righteousness and lawliness and we cannot commune with light with darkness and Christ with Baal and, and what part does an unbeliever. So if we, it says, for you are the temple of the living spirit where the Holy Spirit dwells in. If the Holy Spirit dwells in us, how are we going to fill ourselves up with stuff that's not pleasing to God? You understand what I'm saying? We cannot fill ourselves up with things that are not pleasing to God. And this is where God, because God has been dealing with me. You know what I mean? And and it's not only just, oh, because I went to the church and stuff. No, the church was just a revelation for God to keep talking to me about, look, you need to get stuff out of your life that's been in your life. It needs to come out. You understand what I'm saying? The movies you're watching, you cannot watch them anymore. Because those movies are not pleasing to God. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh, it's it's the same thing as saying, what part has a believer with a unbeliever? You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, and then it says, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What's the definition of lawlessness? Somebody look it up for me real fast. You're going to see. Lawlessness, a state of disorder due to a disregard of law. I don't really 
give. You understand what I'm saying? If I'm, how, how could I be, how could I have fellowship, a righteous man, with somebody that really doesn't give a crap, basically? That's what it's saying, right? So how could I be watching stuff that people act like they don't really give a crap? You understand? I can say that, right? That's, that's legal, right? <laughs> So it says, if we keep reading, it says, For you are the temple of the living God, as, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And this is the key right here. 17. Therefore, come out from among them and be what? Separate. And be what? Separate. What? Separate. Says who? The Lord. And what else does it say? Do not touch what is unclean. Do not touch what is unclean. We need to be separated. Man, I've been preaching this thing forever. And I'm going to keep preaching because God is preaching it to me. He does not want me to go where I'm not supposed to go. He does not want me to hang around who I'm not supposed to hang around with. He has my steps ordered. Amen? And let me tell you, he knows exactly where I... This year, let me tell you what's going to happen this year. This year is going to be the most awesome year because I want to walk in God's complete will. Like, I don't want to take a step without God telling me, that's, you took the wrong... Like, I don't want to make any mistakes this year. You guys understanding what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to touch anything unclean. I, I, don't, I don't want uh, to offend God in any way. Are you guys understanding me? Yes. It says, yes. be separated, says the Lord. Separated from who? Lawless. Separate from what is unclean. All of that up there. Um, being unable to believe your God. Being from idols. idols. From unbelievers. Everything. We need to be separated. Mm -hmm. And then if we're separated, what happens afterward? I will what? Receive you. But is he going to receive you if you're tied into the same things as the world? No, sir. If you're looking at these movies that are cussing and doing this and this and that? No, sir. Do you think, do you think you're going to be, you're going to be um, connected? And I will, you think God is going to receive you if you're hanging around with people that are lawlessness, that are talking garbage and this and that, you think he will receive you? No, sir. What do you think? No. We, this year, I don't know about you, I know about me. And I want, I'm, I'm preaching this to you so you guys could jump on this, uh, on this, um, on what God is telling me to do. And let me tell you, I already have a message for Sunday, and 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 I, I'm seeking God for for a word. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not looking for nothing, but for God to tell me exactly what I need to say. You know? And then it says, "I will receive you. I will be a what father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters," says the Lord Almighty. God has been showing me things. And the funny thing is that he's been showing us things, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, he just showed me this now. He's been showing us things, you know what I mean? And he, he's brought it to our attention before, right? And he's brought a lot of things to our attention before. Do you guys agree? Yes. Has God spoken to anybody about something here in this room? Yes, yes. sir. And have you fallen back into a trap? In some things, yes. Yes. Yeah. I have. I, I come here today to tell you I've fallen into some traps. I preached about one time about um about about fishing. And my wife she loves that preaching. She always tells me, oh, about like the lures. It's like the enemy won't, but he's like a, a fisherman, you know what I mean? He goes, he throws a fish, he catches you, you know? And then next time, you know, oh, I'm going to change the bait around. You know, oh my, you know about that stuff, you know? They're not biting with, with the squid like this round. Let's cut it in little slices. Oh, yeah. 
Let's let's take off the weights and throw it with our weights. Yeah, and that's the way the same that's the same way the enemy is. He'll change your bait around and he he'll, he'll trick you. He's a trickster. He wants to trick you to fall into the same thing. He'll just put something different on it. You understand what I'm saying? Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it's fine to watch. Like you know, I'm gonna throw stuff for me. Oh, it's fine. You know, Thor, the superhero. Those are superhero movies. What do they have to do with anything? Who's Thor? The son of who? Odin. Who's Odin? <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> Sintra Claus. Yep. Huh? Yep. Oh Nick. What about what about what about Wonder Woman? Where did she come up from? You don't know? Amazon. She's on Amazon, but where did she come? She's from Zeus. She's a god. It says it in the movie and everything. She's a god. She was created by Ephroditus or whatever, or the mom, and, and he, she created her out of clay, and he, put, he touched her and made her alive. That's who Wonder Woman is. Because she's not like all the other Amazons. She has special powers. She's a god. And then her brother in the movie is the other devil that talks about, I'm telling you, it's like all this stuff Hollywood is putting it inside our minds exactly like what we were watching here on this video. Truth or tradition. We have been sucked in by all the garbage that man has made up just like all this, you know, Christmas and all this stuff that comes before Christ. These are traditions that have been going on for a long time before and we're just putting makeup on them and making them look pretty. Just like all these superhero movies. That I have, I'm going to be, I've been sucked into it. I have. Gina's laughing because he's like, you're right, you have, buddy. <laughs> Pastor, you got sucked in. Yeah, I got sucked in, Gene. But it ain't going to happen anymore. I cut, I cut that line. I'm not, like the guy said, I'm not, I'm, not hitting, I'm not eating that hook and sinker at the same time. Forget that. I come to tell the enemy today, forget about it. What does 2 Corinthians 11, 14 say? Says. And no wonder, for Satan himself, trans Satan himself transforms into an angel of light. Woo-wee. Boy, oh boy. I'm, throwing, I'm telling you what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Everything looks beautiful. Right? Man, that movie was good. That thing was action packed. Saying it was all up in that movie. Zeus, um, Odin, and everyone else was in that movie. Satan and, and all his demons were up in that movie. Hmm? And what were we doing? Eating it up. Like Rice Krispies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, the thing is that he made it into a Rice Krispie treat, so it tastes even better with marshmallows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does uh, Matthew 6.22 say? The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So everything that you're putting in there, where are you putting it into? Bye. And we fall right back into the same pattern again. This year, I'm not falling back into the same pattern. I come here today to tell you, church, I wish everyone was here, but at least you guys are here. You guys want to hear this message. I'm not falling back into the enemy's pattern. And let me tell you, it's going to be a fight. You think you're going to, oh, like, oh, that's what I've been saying since, since, since 2019. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, but let me tell you this morning, boy, I was under attack because the enemy, he, he's not going to just like let you like, but we could do this. I could do this. I 
could do this with the help of the Holy Spirit. We could do this. We could say no to the enemy and say yes to the Lord and live righteous lives. Mm -hmm. yes, righteousness in this hand and righteousness in this hand. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. I think it's in... Um, Woo. You could tell I've been studying my word. Let me see. It's in 2 Corinthians. I know we have to go back a little bit because I was reading the whole chapter. 2 Corinthians. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 7. In the true speech and in the power of God with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left hand. What's up? We need to come righteous. We need to come righteous in front of the Lord. Both hands. You cannot be clean in one hand and dirty in the other. You understand what I'm saying? God wants completeness this year. He cannot... I've been preaching about living in two worlds. This message came from little Rachel. But God gave her a revelation that we're preaching today. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot have righteousness here and lawlessness here. If we're going to be conquerors, if we're going to be victors this year. We need to have righteousness here and righteousness here. Because if you're in the middle, you're going you're gonna to fall apart. Mm -hmm. What was the second sentence? Six, seven. Six, seven. Six, seven. Mm -hmm. It talked about other stuff, but that caught my eye, so I want to bring it to you. Okay. So let, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to finish. You want me to finish? You guys are tired? No, no sir. You want to go home already? No. It's 9.30. No, we can't. It's like, it's like, some people are out in the club and today, right? But well, we're up here home. in the church. Amen. We're just starting right now. Hmm? People are just starting, right? Yeah. Not you. They're just getting ready. Not, not, not either. Not either. Huh? They're, not. they're getting ready. They're preparing, yes. they're okay. preparing yes. the party right now, right? Yeah. I'm getting prepared. I'm getting dressed right now. It's what, 9.30, 9.40? Drinking, drinking a little bit. I'm going to take a little. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm getting yeah. ready. I'm getting ready for the nightlife. Right? But there it says, verse 17, Therefore come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I want to give the Father everything that I have this year. Amen. You know why? You, you want me to tell you why? Because I need a father in my life. I need somebody to guide me this year. And how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? It says, listen, therefore come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Do not touch what is, in, what is unclean and I will receive you. And what else does it say? And I will be a father to you. I need a father this year. Amen. If I'm gonna survive this year, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do what God has called, I need I need a daddy. I need somebody to guide me. But you know what it says? Don't touch what you're not supposed to touch. Don't look at what you're not supposed to look at. Don't listen to what you're not supposed to listen to. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, hallelujah. Then, what did it say? I will be a father to you. And what? Come on now, preach it. Say it loud. What, a, what happens? I will be a father to you. And what? And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Says who? The Lord Almighty. I need, I need a daddy this year. 
I need a daddy to guide me. I'm we telling you, church. We, we all do. We need him. We need him this year. But he says that he will be with us, right? That's what the word says. I, I'm not preaching no crazy doctrine anymore. I'm telling you what the word says. He said, I'll be with you. I'll be your father and you will be my sons and daughters. But what? Separate. Separate. Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't look. Don't do what I've called you before not to do. Because he's called us before not to do it. And then the enemy has come and played a little trick on us and changed the bait around. That he, he's our counselor. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's how it makes it easy. That's how it makes it easy. But the thing is, baby, that people have fallen so much into their sin that they have numbed the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to the Holy Spirit anymore because they don't really care what God says. What was lawlessness? What was the definition? Disorder. Hold on, I wrote it down. What else? What the, there has to be another. Due to a disregard of the law. Oh, there you go. That's the part. That's the part that I'm talking about. And what do you say the law stands for? He said the he said the law stands for something that yeah, is not for men. In truth or tradition? Well, he said that uh, that Torah means instruction, not law. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're gonna finish with this. Gina's laughing He's like you ain't finished nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> we'll finish with a little story in the Bible. And this story is in the book of Matthew. Chapter 12. Hurry, I'm going to finish with this. Verse 22 through 28. And the title of this story is A House Divided Cannot Stand. You understand? Mm -hmm. A house, the title of this story is A House Divided Cannot Stand. That's what your Bible says, Omar? Mm -hmm. The a same thing. A House Divided Cannot Stand. Cannot Stand. So, we cannot conquer if we are divided. We will not be able to do what we're claiming to do this year if we have lawlessness here and righteousness here. If we're Coming to church and, and, and seeking the Holy Ghost and then we're here filling ourselves up with the junk of Hollywood. Let me tell you something, church. J Hollywood does not have anything that edifies me. Right? Does it? Because I've never seen anything. It doesn't edify me spiritually. And if it doesn't edify me spiritually, I do not need to put that stuff inside of me. A house divided cannot stand. I cannot live in two worlds, basically. I only got to give you the title of this whole thing. That's the title. That's it. We cannot stand if we're divided. We cannot live here and there. We cannot believe this this year and the next year, forget about it, and then fall into another year and do the same thing because it was a tradition that we did for so many years. I'm following... Sylvia's laws, <laughs> her people. I've been grafted in. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take out all the paganism from my life and put in, like, like he was saying, where do you see in the Bible that the apostles celebrated Christmas? Where? Where? Do you see that anywhere? No, sir. Not in my Bible. 
what they celebrate, the Passover. That's what we're going to celebrate here. We celebrated it last year. It was hot. Very good. <laughs> I say that because there, there are some elements in, in the Passover dinner that were hot. Horseradish. It's not really hot. It just open. No, no, it's not. Like, it's not. It, it just opens up. Like what he said, it's, it's Jewish dress day. Uh, that thing will have all your tear up. It clears yeah. up everything. Oh, God. It's not really so hot. Painful. It, yes, it, it was hot. No, it was but painful. It, what it, what it, what it, it's the fumes or something, you know? Yeah, no, it's was... not like a habanero or a ghost pepper. That's hot, you know? You put it in your mouth. But, you know, horseradish is a different kind of hot. It's bitter and painful. <laughs> Bring it back. But it's, but it's good. It's I like good. the sweet I like stuff. It. I like it. I like the sweet stuff that Sylvia made. Sylvia Shalom, we love you so much. Thank you for, for always being there with us, even though you're not here with us. You know, we, we honestly love you. Like, a lot. A lot. <laughs> If you're listening, yes. we love you. Shalom, peace, we love you. We are, we are your people now. God brought you, God brought you to us, Amen. and we have embraced you, and we have embraced your traditions, and that's because that's our tradition from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. Amen. That's who I believe in. Amen. Not in Sinner Claus or any other. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you what he says. He, he more looks like this. And let me tell you, I was, I was walking through the mall and I was like looking at all these Santa Claus, you know, because they just get guys out there, you know, that are, you know, and some of them look like that. <laughs> okay, let's let's read this last little story. Could you read it for me? <clears throat> this is basically what I told the guy over there in the, in the church. <laughs> this is what I I threw this at him over there when we were you in know, and, and Let me tell you, you tell people that. And people are, oh, oh, man, you're, you're like religious. And, yeah. and they start and throwing all that stuff at you, you know? Yeah, yeah they're it's more religious than us because they're believing in stuff that comes from way back when. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like I said, you know, it has been masquerade to look beautiful and pretty. But if you go down to the root of the whole thing, we could see like that. You said crap. You put that thing in a box and you, and you tie it up with a nice bow and a bread. It looks beautiful. Yeah, they, but what is it? Crap. 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 <laughs> we're blessed to see, praise the Lord. Amen. And I, I want to talk, talk to my nephews about this because I know that I kind of like, in, this, this, in the end of the year, I kind of like participated with them in some movies that we're not, I shouldn't have watched with them. So I'm going to sit down and, and apologize to them too. Because we all make mistakes. I'm not perfect, Gene, either. I know. We, we, I told you. Oh, you seen that one? <laughs> yeah, and that new Avengers. Yeah, was like that guy is like, <laughs> right? That the uh, the main guy is like the devil himself. He wants to like eliminate half of the world. Stan Lee, Stan Lee passed away. Huh? Stan Lee passed away. Who? Stan Lee. Oh yeah, yeah, the the comic guy. All right, read the story. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So you see what I'm saying? The enemy, if the enemy, if we're hanging around with the enemy, eventually we're going to be destroyed. Eventually we're going to be on his side. That's why we see a lot of people here in this church that are not here today. Right? You know why? Because eventually what happened is going to be desolate. And if 
And if you guys that are here today, you don't change your ways, eventually you're going to fall into the same category. Because a house divided cannot stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by, be, by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So, if we keep going back to our old ways and our old ways of thinking, we're going to lose the battle. We're going to lose. We're not going to win the battle. God has told me and is telling you guys this year, we need to get away from our old ways of thinking. We cannot... We cannot be divided. A house divided cannot stand. It can't. It can. Think about marriage. A marriage that's divided, what, what happens? It doesn't stand. It doesn't stand. It gets separated. The same thing it is in life, in the Christian life. We cannot be divided. We cannot be evil and good. It, it, they don't mix. Light and darkness do not mix. You cannot mix those. But the Lord says, if you leave all that stuff, if you step away from all that stuff, right? If you leave all that stuff behind, what did he say? I will be your father. If you touch, if you don't touch what's unclean, what happens? I'll be your father. And what else? You will be my sons, and you will be my daughter. Amen. I'm a do I, I, I want I want daddy this year. Who wants daddy this Amen. year? Amen. Who who needs a daddy like Lord? I need you. Amen. So how are you gonna get this? Don't touch anything between. Be separate. Be separated. You see, you guys didn't think I was gonna throw a message like this. <laughs> I need it too, girl. Girl, I need it too. I need it. 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 God, God, he whooped me on this week. He whooped me. I'm telling you, he spanked me. He like, boy, you better get your stuff straight. And you know what I told? I need, I need, I need a daddy this year. I need you. I need a daddy. And he said, you know what he told me? He says, I'll be your daddy. And you'll be my son, and you're going to be my daughter. Mm -hmm. If you separate from that stuff, if you separate from that junk, if you separate from the things that are in the world, if you get away from the unrighteous, the lawlessness, the darkness, it's everywhere. We, could, we don't have to like, oh, I'm not going to look. Yeah, well, whatever. You know what I mean? It's there. I cannot cut down a tree or whatever and tell somebody not to do nothing but I don't have to participate in it. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't tell Hollywood not to make the movies. You know, whatever. They, they believe in all that stuff. And, but I don't need to be looking at them mm -hmm. because the Lord says, I want to be your daddy. But for me to be your daddy, you need to get separated from that stuff. That's what the Bible says. That's what Paul is telling the church of Corinthians, that we're all messed up with all kind of idols. And that's what God is telling us today. That is what God is telling the church for a long time. That's what God is telling the church around the world. You need to separate from that so I could be your daddy and you could be my son and you could be my daughter. Who wants to be a son and a daughter of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ? Amen. We have, the, we have the keys. We have the knowledge. God has given us the wisdom. We cannot keep falling back in Satan's trap. Amen? Amen. Who's going to say today, look, you know, 
I want you to close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second. Everyone close their eyes. For one second. No, a minute, a minute. No, no, two minutes. Now think about this. How many times have you told the Lord, I'm not going to do that anymore? <laughs> Some people are just grunting back there. Lord, I'm not going to do that anymore. I promise. We, we make promises and everything. Lord, I'm not going to watch that stuff anymore. Let me tell you, church. I told the Lord one time, I'm not going to watch that stuff anymore. And let me tell you, I'll watch that thing again. But God says today, I want to be your son I want to be your daddy, but I need you to be separated from that stuff. Who's ready to say, that's it, I, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop this. Hmm? It's over. Let me tell you, church, we could do it. We could do this with the help of the Holy Ghost. I don't care if people are watching this video and they say that I'm a religious freak. Yeah, I am a religious freak. I am a freak. I'm a Jesus freak. Because Jesus saved me, delivered me, transformed me, and made me the man that I am today. And yeah, I am a freak. I am a freak for him. Because I know what the truth. The truth will set you free. And Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father but through Him, through the truth. But then on the other hand, Satan is a lie. He is the father of lies, from what the Bible says. So what today, I'm going to hang on the truth. And the truth is the word that I'm preaching to you today. So today... I leave it in your hands. What do you want? What do you want for 2019? This is the first service of the year. What do you, it doesn't have to be Sunday. Sunday, I'm not going to, no, no. Today's the first service of the year. What do you want for 2019? Are you ready to make some changes in your life? God, Jesus, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to say, look, I'm not going to serve Beelzebub anymore. Man, I threw that one out good there. <laughs> I'm not going to serve him anymore. I am going to separate from him because I need daddy this year. I need daddy to guide me. I want to be his son. Hallelujah. We're going to play a... Uh, 